no, you keep going, you know. Okay. Well, maybe we should talk about, <clears throat> this is my new book coming out in the fall. Ah. Okay. Uh, communication is a process and it diminishes public relations. Uh, I mean, you, you, you be very successful in counseling without actually doing communications as is defined now. You know, you're just talking to somebody and saying, don't do that. How do you measure advice given take, and taken to eliminate a problem that does not arise? Whereas if you hadn't given me advice, there would be all sorts of difficulty. Mm -hmm. That's public relation. And may not involve communication. Don't do it. Do not fire people before Thanksgiving or Christmas. And when you go and get a $15 million bonus or whatever. Harold Burson believes it too. He said, the adoption of communications as a synonym for public relations started the business on a slippery slope. And I agree totally. If you go through the page directory, you will find few titles that use the word public relations. Uh, these people who are the so-called elite of the field these days go to uh, watering holes of Baker or Tan or Vail and listen to gurus talk about things that they have no involvement in. It, it is a pro, it's like fantasy baseball. It really is. They, they, it is their way of, of reinforcing their sense of self-worth. But then they go back to their day job and are pushing vitamins or something like that. They're not counseling. And the so-called PR seminar dropped the word PR because it was irrelevant. PR week is not really, it should be communications week, but there is a publication like that. Um, but I think it has two disadvantages. One subtle and one very profound. It encourages senior corporate officers to think of the process as implementation, the public relations process. Uh, they don't make any distinction in their mind between public relations and communications. To them, it's all the same thing. It's media work, whatever it is. They never think of it, or rarely, think of it in terms of advice and counsel. The PR people, or the communicators, as they call themselves, are called in after the fact, not before the fact. Uh, everybody communicates. There's no question about that. That, that. that broad application of the term to public relations, it just diminishes what public relations is. And as far as the practitioners are concerned, they love the cachet of public relations, but they call themselves communicators. Just look at their titles. It's where they get their kicks, I guess. I don't know. But it, it's What's going to happen, and that's what I wrote, this book covers the past, present, and what I foresee as the future of public relations. Uh, the world is so complex, and we've just read about it every day, that CEOs are going to need somebody at their side who can see the world through a different prism than the, than the accustomed disciplines in a business. I mean, the legal, the accounting, the operational, the marketing people, 
think in the terms of their own discipline, and they can be very excellent at it, but they do not go beyond it. Somebody has to be sitting there and saying, if you do it that way, chief, you're going to create more problems than you're solving. Why? Well, because. So that's one thing. Uh, if the President of the United States has, and has a, I guess always have had, a uh, personal advisor to the President for foreign affairs, or whatever the title is, they're going to be in need and will be fulfilled by, not by PR people, tell me, personal advisor to the President on public policy, or personal advisor to the Chief Executive on personal policy. It's going to come from liberal arts graduates. Uh, maybe they can't sit down and write a white paper. Maybe they can't write a big speech. They're going to hire the communicators to do that. But they're going to sit there and ideally they should have no administrative duties because that gets in the way. They should just be thinkers. Leonardo da Vinci was supported himself on was uh, successful not as an inventor or a painter. He was a counselor. Princes paid him handsomely just to sit and talk to him. There's a book out uh, was not out been out for a long time uh, called How to Think Like Leonardo da Vinci. And I read it. And it led me to write a book about how to change your job into a career. The author of the How to Think of About Like Da Vinci identified 12 attributes of Da Vinci personality, three of which uh, applied particularly to public relations. And one was curiosity, which is Define it many ways, you know, anti status quo, whatever, but why, 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 why? The second was the use of the right brain. And the third was the ability to see an obscure event or read about an obscure event and start to think of it in terms of another obscure event, and all of a sudden you, you, a pattern emerges. And people don't like that because you're seeing problems they don't see or they ignore them. Or worse, they, they deny they're ignoring them. There was a professor at the University of California years and years ago who, who wrote a paper on this, which I treasured. Uh, and he likened the development of a public opinion to a biological process awareness, and so on. Uh, so I really do believe that, uh, and it's not going to be the current generation of CEOs, because they're still with it. And it's not going to be the ones that immediately follow them, because they're coming out of the B school who are still teaching models and case histories and formulas. And I don't care if they say that we now put social responsibility in there and all that sort of thing. They are not touching really roots of what I'm talking about. Down the road, and I'll probably not be here to see it, there's going to be a class of young people coming out of the business schools who are not wedded to that quantitative mentality. And they are going to be liberal arts people. They are not going to be journalists. They're not going to be technological people who are wizards with, the, with email and Facebook and all that stuff. They're going to be. They're going to be entrepreneurial, mentally. They're going to be intellectual. And they're going to see problems where others don't see it, and they're going to have really good advice. They're going to be free to do that. I would, if I were starting a company or someone asked me, I would put a sociologist somewhere at the top. 
And certainly, if I had a decent public relations operation, which would be called that, it would have a sociologist. A good friend of mine is a tenured sociologist at uh, Williams College. Uh, he's a little different from most in that he has tramp plant flaws more than you can realize. He wrote two, two books. One was Image Makers, and the other was called Moral Mazes, M-A-Z-E-S. Uh, and he, he studied why employees hear different messages than the brass is sending them. This, if you think about it, it's a very profound thought. Mm -hmm. You're going to need people like that. I mean, he and I collaborate. At least we have lunch and blow our brains out equally. Mm -hmm. uh, and that stuff fascinates me. How do you do that? And now look what we're going through with Mark Penn. You've read about it. The tragedy is that the corporate clients of Burson and Marcella will not see the relevance of the hypocrisy that it represents. It's not that he uh, double talked and, 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 and embarrassed Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know. He has no moral background. He doesn't realize the conflict of interest. He doesn't realize what it will do to the uh, reputation of integrity and honesty and truth for Bersin Mostella. And nor does I read in the paper before I came here this morning, Martin Sorrell sees nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's not going to change his policy. He says, the world is too complex. We have these things happen. He made a mistake. That's true. But I, he's going to continue to build Burson Monstella. Martin Sorrell was looking at it as money. He's not looking at it as the reputation of Burson Monstella. Mm -hmm. I mean... Here's a guy, first of all, he's very unpleasant if you read the papers. He's uh, disdainful of any point of view but his own. He's arrogant, he's smug, what else? The people at the Hillary campaign hate him. The media hates him. And I can't believe the people at Burson Moss thought all of him, but I don't know. But he was permitted to maintain his own polling company in addition to being CEO of Burson Moss. It would be interesting to see how much business he funneled from Burson Mosto. Where did the $13 million he got from Hillary go? Did it, any of it go to Burson Mosto or was it all to him? Where, how much is he making in the polling company and where does that go? And how much is he making at Burson Mosto? And Martin Sorrell, who is a very bright guy and has certainly made uh, his critics into fan what he's done with WPP, you know, that company, he's a holding company. But he reveals his misunderstanding of what public relations is all about when, when he is dismissive of the enormity of what is represented in, Penn, in not only Penn's actions, but Penn's uh, attitude. And how can the PR business survive if it doesn't stand up for principle? You talk about the page principles. You have Fleischman Hillard a couple of years ago where their highly touted head of the Los Angeles office who had been a local figure of some political importance was accused, indicted, and is now in prison for kiting the bills to the, one of the city's agencies. And in the process of, of the accusations and the trials and all that sort of thing, you heard nothing from, from Fleischman Hillard. They distanced they distant themselves from it. Why didn't they stand up? Why didn't John Graham say, God damn it, that's terrible? If I had not... They didn't say, if they had treated a client's crisis communications the way they handled their own, they would have deserved to have been fired. 
What about Ketchum, another big, once proud company, accused of uh, money laundering? That's what they did. Mm -hmm. You don't hear. Where, why are they silent? Mm -hmm. You talk about it being a profession. It's not a profession when they can't even stand up and talk about it. You won't hear peep from any PR.